Welcome back to Serial Tech series on the basics of SAS SATA and also the Serial Tech Bus Expert. In the last section we covered uh, the basics of SAS including primitives and uh, some speed negotiation basics. In this section we'll be going over SAS speed negotiation in detail. Please note that this covers the speed negotiation for SAS 1.1, 2.0 and 2.1 we do not yet have a section on SAS 3.0 speed negotiation, but it is in process. My name is Matthew Hallberg, and I'm the product manager at Serial Tech. You can reach me on the web at matt at serialtech.com. So for speed negotiation, SAS uses OOB or out-of-band signals to begin the process similar to Serial ATA. Includes the OOB signals of COM wake, COM init, COM reset, and also a new one, COM SAS. COM wake is used by the initiator to speed neg, speed negotiate with the SATA device. So in this instance, the device and host send COM ints until they recognize COM ints from another device, and then a COM SAS is sent on both sides to initialize the rest of the speed negotiation process. If a COM init is detected, a COM SAS is sent. If no COM SAS is detected back, a COM wake is then sent just in case it's a SATA device. After the OOB sequence, the SNW windows are started. SNW standing for speed negotiation windows. Remember that SNW1 is a lines that are sent at 1.5 gigabits per second. SNW2 is a lines that are sent at 3 gigabits per second. SNW3 will be explained on the next few slides. Please note that this is the opposite of serial ATA. Serial ATA, the device starts out by sending the highest supported speeds first, and then the host will respond with um, its highest supported speeds. So let's start with uh, SNW3 and train SNW, remembering that SNW1 and SNW2 cover the speeds of 1.5 gig and 3 gig. For SAS2 devices, SNW3 and train SNW were added to allow the devices to broadcast what features they support along with requesting a multiplexed link. The order in which the speed negotiation occurs is detailed below. So first the devices go through SNW1 and SNW2 and then they go into SNW3. During SNW3 the devices will send a combination of com wake bursts and DC idles. These bursts and idles correspond to a 32-bit uh, quote-unquote packet, or like a series, that will list the device's five capabilities. So below is uh, our frame details view, which shows some decoded um, five capabilities bits. So you'll see down here, device A has a Gen 1, which is 1.5 gig without SSC, Gen 2, 3 gig without SSC, and Gen 3, 6 gig without SSC. Device B supports all of the speeds with SSC and without SSC. Okay. So this is what the SNW process looks like. The SNW1 goes out, SNW2 goes out, and then the PHY capabilities bits are exchanged and then once the PHY capabilities bits are exchanged we go into train SNW which then at that point the highest commonly supported settings of both devices are sent out so in the example previous you could look and see that this supports Gen 3 without SSC this supports Gen 3 without SSC so therefore your highest supported bits or your highest supported capabilities is going to be Gen 3 6 gig without SSC. And so the trains are sent and train duns. Okay. So this is what the speed negotiation looks like in a spreadsheet view. So here's SNW1, here's SNW2, here's SNW3, and so you'll see some bits. So start with the first com wake, start bit, the TX SSC type, and then the capability bits that are sent all the way down this way and then the other side is sending its capability bits as well 
And eventually, after all the capabilities bits have been sent and the parity has been checked, the next thing we do is go into train SNW where we send off a bunch of trains and train duns once we've met our uh, our commonly supported settings. Once the train duns are done and eventually an address identify occurs. So this is just a quick reference chart for speed negotiation. Start SNW1, SNW2. If SNW1 and SNW2 are valid or SNW1 is valid and SNW2 is invalid, uh, meaning it's 1.5 gig, then it goes to final, which goes to end. Is SNW2 and 1 valid? They go down here. Is SNW3 valid, meaning did the device see these other, you know, one side that is 6 gig is looking for the other side to send those calm wake bursts. If it never, never sees them, then it's an invalid SNW which then goes to over here. Was it a valid SNW2? Yes. It goes to final SNW. If, S if the SNW3 went from both sides and there was good, the parity is good and there are commonly supported settings, then we go to train SNW. If the train SNW is invalid and uh, there aren't any other commonly supported settings, then the link will reset itself and go into a loop until it finds commonly supported settings. Next up is the identify process. For non-SMP devices, uh, identify frames are sent similar to identify device in serial ATA to determine the worldwide name and the type of device. So here is a frame details view look at an identify. Uh, device type is 1 and device. Address frame type is 0 is so an identify frame. Uh, there is no reason specified. There's an SSP initiator port, an SMP initiator port. The device name is this. The device address is this. And that's about all that we're going to see in this particular uh, identify frame. For SAS drives, mode sense commands are also sent to read the capabilities of the drive. The mode sense commands will ask for information from different logs on the drive that identify things such as type of protocol it supports, how many FIs, link rate, etc. For more on the discovery process, again, SMP commands are sent to learn the other addresses in the system. There's a report general request to determine how many addresses are connected to the expander. A discover is sent to every file in the expander to find out what kind of a device it is attached to. And a report general and discover is repeated across the entire topology. Report route information is sent after the route information table has been built up through the process above. So here's a sample SAS topology with zoning. HBA1, HBA2, these both go into an expander. So you'll see here, here's the key. Green drives are seen only by HBA1, blue drives are only seen by HBA2, and yellow drives are seen by both HBAs. So with zoning, this HBA has access to these drives here, and here. This HBA has access to these drives here, here, and here. And then both have access to this set of drives here, here, and here. Okay. Here's an example of the discovery process. So report general, discover list, report general, discover list, report general, and then we start sending a bunch of discovers until all of the files across all of the expanders have been discovered. So that concludes this section of SAS speed negotiation and also the SAS discovery process over SMP. The next session that we'll be heading into is SSP frames. Thank you for your time.